what Rahul Gandhi said. This, remember, with the United Kingdom's constant uh, attendees right now with Rahul Gandhi saying that, uh, with Rahul Gandhi again mentioning that India's democracy is dead. So after the Cambridge lecture, now speaking to the Indian Journalists Association, he said that uh, European Union and United States of America are absolutely oblivious. BJP, of course, quickly listening to what he had said and are charging with the Bharat Badnami attack. Here's what BJP Shahzad Poonawala has said about Rahul Gandhi. All right, Shahzad uh, uh, has, is uh, now joining me as well on the phone line. Uh, Shahzad, so you have said this is defaming Bharat. How is it defaming Bharat? He's targeting Prime Minister Narendra Modi. He's saying that opposition is being charged at. This is not anti-India, is it? Pooja, that's why I put out all my facts on Twitter. The video shows clearly Rahul Gandhi can abuse PM, he can abuse BJP, but he has sought Western intervention into affairs of India. He's asking for Europe, United States, United Kingdom, and ironically, at a time when we are celebrating 75 years of our independence, this man goes on foreign soil demanding foreign intervention in Indian affairs, uh, an assault on our national sovereignty, on our integrity, and that is not kosher. That is absolutely unacceptable. He's done this before when he had a conversation with Nicholas Burns. You've seen George Soros poke his nose into Indian affairs. And ironically, Bharat, uh, a person of Bharat origin, is actually guiding Britain's democracy. And here, a Brit MP of India goes to British soil and says that we want you to intervene into our affairs. That is unacceptable. You can abuse the BJP. You can abuse Prime Minister. You do that anyways on a daily basis. There's absolutely no problem with that. But why would you betray Bharat by saying that you want foreign intervention in our democracy? Pooja, do you think 140 crore Indians aren't capable enough of dealing with their own internal issues? Do you think our democracy is not strong enough to deal with our own internal issues? That we need some... You're calling power this a foreign, foreign intervention and foreign validation because as an individual, he can uh, go on a global stage and say what he wishes. Uh, Pooja, did you hear the statement? I, I wish I didn't have to explain this to you. Please hear the statement of Rahul. Yes. He says that why are the Western powers, namely United States and Europe, oblivious to India's dying democracy? Yes. And these are the so-called democratic powers. Your democracy is getting over and they are doing nothing about Correct. it. And this is the kind of intervention he's seeking from United States and Europe. Are you all right with European intervention into Indian democracy? Are you okay with intervention of foreign powers into Indian democracy? Tomorrow, do, does he seek the intervention of China and Pakistan into Indian democracy? I don't think that our sovereignty should be compromised by any individual, no matter how much we may hate each other politically or domestically. That's our domestic issue. But to go on foreign soil and to say that I want you as another country to intervene in my democracy is an assault on the sovereignty, the preamble safeguards our sovereignty. And I hope Shazad, that... Uh, would one call this a smart strategy? That's likely what the Congress supporters may say. Or is this a self-goal that he has done and indulged in again? I would not even reduce it by saying that it's a self-goal. I think it is nothing short of betrayal. Pooja, you and I may have hundreds of differences. But we sort our differences out within the framework of our democracy. But if tomorrow Pooja starts going and telling the Chinese that, look, come and solve my internal problems, hmm. that is betrayal. Rahul Gandhi's utterances, I hope the Congress will have the wisdom to condemn it and to hmm. distance themselves, just like George Soros was intervening in our democracy. Rahul Gandhi seeking intervention of a foreign power into our democracy is nothing but an assault on the collective idea of our freedom that we are celebrating 75 years later and also an assault on our sovereignty. Shaza, two quick questions. Uh, one, let's, because you've also mentioned the Chinese, he also mentioned the Chinese. He said, when I ask about Chinese uh, on our Indian territory, they don't even let us speak in the parliament. Opposition is dead. They don't let us ask questions. And that's the reason that I can speak at a Cambridge, but I can't speak in an Indian university. Well, you know, that, uh, first of all, on the issue of China, there have been hundreds of debates on television studios, but as far as Parliament is concerned, the rules of Parliament do not permit ongoing national security issues to be discussed, and therefore 2611 wasn't discussed, a paper was laid. There are several instances under the UPA when issues of important national security concerns where movements of troops and other intelligence details would have to be shared were not debated in Parliament, a statement was made. That procedure has been followed even this time. The conversation on these issues has taken place in India, India is a robust democracy with a robust media. I don't think the India Today group has censored any conversation of Rahul on this issue. And having said that, that is another issue. 
All I am trying to focus on right now, Pooja, is Rahul Gandhi, an Indian MP, demanding foreign powers to intervene into our affairs. Correct. That's the limited scope of my tweet and my utterance. Do, do you also I think, yes, Shahzad, my final question here. Listen, listen to what I, I, I'm asking also here that, yes, okay, he's made a comment, he's asking for foreign validation, there's criticism already coming on it. Do you think Rahul Gandhi would have done better than to go to Cambridge or to other universities than ferociously, aggressively campaign for the Congress party within the country because if the Congress was doing well and, and was in states, you wouldn't need to go abroad. You could actually change uh, a lot of things that you need to as an opposition here in the country and that's where often, like in northeastern states, Rahul Gandhi was missing. But Pooja, if the people of India reject his party, is it my business to make his party do well so that he doesn't go abroad and betray Bharat? I mean, that kind of argument I have never heard. Now, it's the northeast. Out of 180 seats, gives this party a paltry eight seat and says that we are no longer interested in the Congress. That is his business and his affair to sort out with the people and why the people are rejecting him. But having said that, my limited point once again on your platform is that can a person, especially an MP, demand foreign intervention in India's domestic affairs, internal affairs? Isn't this an assault on our sovereignty? This is all I'm asking. That's all I'm saying. Okay, fair Is enough. Shahzad Poonawala, yes, of the Bharatiya Janata Party. Thank you very much for speaking to India today. So what the BJP has said is, how can you go and tell the United States of America and European Union that our democracy is dying and sort of, in a way, save us? It's an SOS message that I, as an opposition member of parliament, is sending out to you. Because we all know what foreign intervention has done to India, whether it's British colonialism or as recently a Pakistan-sponsored terrorism in Kashmir. But here's what happened. Rahul Gandhi, presently in the United Kingdom, in London, after the Cambridge lecture, was speaking at the Indian Journalists Association. This is when he started to make these comments on camera, where he said that democracy appears to be dead, and the United States of America and European nations, who are so-called defenders of democracy, are completely oblivious, or at least seem to, to a huge chunk of the democratic model that has fallen apart in India. He went on to say that opposition parties are battling for Indian democracy. Opposition has a vision of bringing people together. They are trying to unite people, but the BJP is breaking all of it. BJP, of course, slammed it and said, this is betraying India's integrity and sovereignty on foreign soil. Listen in now to all the reactions that have been coming in from the BJP and the opposition parties on what Rahul Gandhi said. So the surprising thing is that the, the so-called defenders of democracy, which are the United States, the European countries, seem to just be oblivious that a huge chunk of the democratic model has come undone, right? which is a real problem. With regards to, uh, and, and frankly, we are, the opposition is fighting that battle. right? And it's not just an Indian battle. It's actually a much more important battle. It is a battle for uh, a huge part of the democratic people. How would you react if democracy suddenly disappeared in Europe? Mm. Right? You'd be shocked and you'd be like, oh my God, that's a massive blow to democracy. Well, how would you react if something, a, a structure three and a half times Europe suddenly went non-democratic? Right? That's happened already. That's not something that is going to happen in the future. That's already happened. Satta se bahar hone ke baad, Rahul Gandhi, jis tarikhe se Chin ko leke unhone apna dostana raviya apna rakha hai. वो भारत जानता है कम से कम अपनी राजनीति की प्रकाष्ठा को इतना ना गिराएं कि उनको लोग भूल जाएं ये तो अपनी पार्टी से लड़ रहे हैं वही बहुत है इनके पार्टी के अंदर इतने सारे दुश्मन इनके खड़े हुए हैं कि एक कोई इंसाफ के लिए कोई लीगल एड बनाता है मैं मैं उनको भी कहता हूं कि भैया तुम किसी और के लिए इंसाफ मत करो भारत में बहुत इंसाफ देने वाले लोग हैं अपनी पार्टी को इंसाफ दिला लो so what Rahul Gandhi said in London, let's try and understand what is the political showdown in domestic politics, in domestic arena, where the Congress party basically has to fight contest elections and gain mass support. Ashutosh Mishra is joining me in this live telecast. Ashutosh, what is it looking like within the country? Because while BJP is one by one campaigning in all states, trying to win elections, Rahul Gandhi is there addressing this lecture. Uh, how has, he's got, has he got support? from opposition parties? Has he said this earlier? Do tell us about how the repercussions are here in the country. 
वेल यू हर्ड इट फ्रॉम शहजाद पूना वाला ऑलरेडी कॉलिंग इट एट एंटी इंडिया इंडिया बैशिंग एंड ऑफ कोर्स सच नैरेटिव एंड दिस इज वॉट सूट्स बीजेपी द बेस्ट दैट अंटिल अनलेस एंड दैट्स एक्जैक्टली राहुल गांधी वेल टॉकिंग टू द इंडियन जर्नलिस्ट एसोसिएशन इन यू के सेड दैट एवरी टाइम वॉट आई से इज बींग ट्विस्टेड बाय द बीजेपी एंड इन फैक्ट वेन द क्वेश्चन वॉज अ लिटरली आस्क दैट वाई यू मेड एंटी इंडिया स्पीचेज सो वट एक्जैक्ट रिस्पॉन्स वॉज दैट वट एवर आई सेड माई लेक्चर इन केम्ब्रिज यूनिवर्सिटी इट वॉज ऑल अबाउट दैट वट आई सेव about the situation about the government but rather he gave a reference that i remember and i recall when prime minister visiting abroad said nothing been done in india after independence 70 years everything was done in last uh, 10 years uh, it, was, it was the prime minister going abroad saying there is a huge corruption in india that was the comment made by rahul gandhi saying isn't it an insult to indian who contributed for making this india at this scale in last 70 years isn't it an insult to all these uh, individuals so that's exactly how the rahul gandhi responding on the foreign soil when it comes to in india and in indian politics of course the success of any leader or political party is always seen the amount of elections that you win and in the number of states you form the government so clearly on that parameter there will be criticism to rahul gandhi that you have a stand you have a approach always you criticize the government but why not contesting election why not campaigning in poll bound states and that more than that of course that question will be asked by the congress party by by the AKK experts but when it comes to the bjp they have already started setting a tune that everything that rahul gandhi said was not an anti government but it was anti india and this is something sentiment and the first reaction coming in BJP from the bjp not any opposition party jumping in support to. ashutosh stay on with me because for the viewer tuning in right now what exactly did rahul gandhi said let me compile it and break it down for you now of course the main target was prime minister narendra modi the bharatiya janata party the rss but here is one by one while speaking this was after the cambridge lecture he was speaking in london at the journalist association and he questioned the modi led government now he is a member of parliament remember from vayanad in kerala and he said i can come to give a talk in cambridge but i cannot deliver a talk in a indian university because that's what modi does not want he in fact go, went on to say there is no concept of opposition anymore in the indian parliament he even raked up the china issue said grand old party's leader has said it's shameful the chinese are sitting in indian territory but the indian government does not even allow a discussion on the same in the parliament he even slammed the rss and said rahul gandhi and rahul gandhi added that right wing organization that the rss is is in its heart a coward organization it will run away if the enemy turns out stronger against india so now uh, an excerpt for you about all that rahul gandhi has said and a ground report by my colleague lavina tandar that the indian political leader can give a talk in cambridge university harvard university but he can't give a talk in india in a university in india and the reason is that our government simply does not allow any idea of the opposition any concept of the opposition to be discussed same happens in parliament house when there are important things that we need to speak about demonetization gst the fact that the chinese are sitting inside our territory when we try to raise these questions we are not allowed to raise them in the house it's a fact it's a it's it's shameful but it's true ki ideology mein ye bhi hai if someone is stronger and the foreign minister of the country is saying it you imagine he is saying china is stronger than us so we can't fight with them acha the british was stronger than us so then we should not have fought with them How? How, how would we ever get independence? How would we ever get independence if we had followed the BJP's principle and the RSS principle that if they are stronger than us, we, if they are stronger than we don't fight them, we would be still ruled by the British. Right? So at the heart of their idea is cowardice. On the other side. we have an ideology of hatred and violence disrespectful ideology that attacks people because of their ideas and you must have noticed one thing and this is in the nature of the bjp's rss 
If you notice the statement of the foreign minister, he said China is much more powerful than us. He said China is much more powerful than us, how can I pick a fight with them? But look, at the heart of the ideology is cowardice. अगर वो मुझसे कमजोर है तो मैं अपने पांच दस मित्रों के साथ उसको पीट दूंगा मगर अगर वो आरएसएस वालों से तगड़ा है तो भी भाग जाते हैं और सावरकर ने अपनी किताब में लिखा है अगर आपने पढ़ी हो जो उनकी किताब है उसमें लिखा कि एक दिन उन्होंने और उनके पांच छह मित्रों ने एक मुसलमान व्यक्ति को पीटा और उस दिन उनको बहुत खुश हुआ खुशी हुई इन द मीडिया वी सी एंगर हेट्रेड वायलेंस Then we see Bollywood, Ashwarya Rai, Salman Khan, cricket. We see all these things, but we don't see the real issues that the people of India are facing. So that was quite a learning experience for me. As Indians, we have to support Rahul Gandhi nowadays, and this is what India actually needs: people to come out and speak against the. Uh, hatred and violence and uh, trying to include uh, this kind of inclusivity and um, trying to get together and uh, build a good India uh, that is built upon like love and uh, care. The whole speech was absolutely amazing and uh, you know Rahul Gandhi ji as, as a whole but uh, I would say that uh, what I like about his leadership is that he's fearless and he speaks his mind and uh, he speaks for the country and and the people and he understands um, everyone's thoughts and uh, that's what brilliant fact he connects with the people for me that is what matters the most uh, the connections that he drives with common people the way he kind of talks to them even today in the interactions he was talking to people and that i think is the hallmark of a leader and he kind of completely embraces that many many facets of uh, the speech speaking uh, people impressed with different facets of speak uh, the speech and they turned up in big numbers one has to say over a thousand people we were told there were 2000 uh, close to 2000 registrations and a lot of them turned up some even were left behind uh, because the hall was jam packed going forward now on monday uh, rahul gandhi will be speaking uh, at in a committee room in the parliament to some uh, mps and lords and the members of the public the attendees and then uh, at a think tank in london chatham house the dean of london for india today from london so of course those are scathing remarks and he had a share of supporters to on a foreign soil what about the indian connect that the congress is actually losing in some states ashutosh mishra continues to be with us in this telecast to help us understand the domestic politics of it currently on in the country uh, the concern of course is if this is asking for foreign intervention in some way ashutosh but also is it about how congress eventually it has to be the opposition party if it wants to be the bjp will have to surface stronger surface united they don't have opposition unity for 2024 congress is losing state elections one by one rahul gandhi should be more present in domestic politics than he is at some of these universities and that perhaps is raising that bigger concern it's not as much what he has said but how the congress is not able to make that mass connect ashutosh <coughs> well even if you uh, make a mass connecting certain states as i said that how it is always uh, measured about success of any political party or leader which is exactly the number of elections that you win and in the states uh, how many government you form no matter how uh, what coalition you uh, you opt out but clearly in that terms the uh, congress always been criticized that every time you may uh, make skating attack against the prime minister modi against the bjp it always backfires but in certain states they also win so that's exactly why there going to be a litmus test uh, 
you have now a new uh, party president and you have a state where there could be possibly anti incumbency state like Karnataka, then you have a three Hindi heartland states and until and unless you make success in these states, clearly Congress may not be in a position to lead any coalition or any such alliance and that's exactly why the regional parties you see having more power and uh, largely bargaining and when you have ambitious leader like Mamta Banerjee, then you have a Nitish Kumar, you have Arvind Kejriwal and then lot more other leaders. So that's what the question every day is asking whether they're going to accept Rahul Gandhi as a leader of the coalition, leader of the alliance. But you remember the statement in the Raipur that Malikarjun Kadge made that there will be a coalition against the BJP in 2024 led by uh, the Congress. And of course, he's also saying that Rahul Gandhi will lead uh, uh, you know, this platform. So on that, uh, we have to see whether there's going to be really unity because in different states, there are different dynamics. One party, which is, you know, coach our rival in Delhi in other states, uh, they join your meeting when it comes to the parliament or a national level. So in this different, okay. uh, you know, very kind of dynamics, that makes hmm. really things very challenging. So whatever he is making, and of course it is for now, hmm. uh, setting a tone for a political battle, which hmm. is a way ahead. But for now, of course, those uh, challenges continues to be for the Congress and as well as Rahul Gandhi.